Okay, so we were on page five of the notes. We went over the, uh, the cumulative, maximum, cumulative maximum permissible dose. So on the top of page six, you have this uh, word called alara. Okay, alara means as low as reasonably achievable. What that means is you want your exposure to radiation to be as low as possible. Okay. The, the most that you should get exposed to is five rims per year. If you get exposed to more than that, then it increases the chances of uh, ionization, which is damage to the body. So you want it to be as low as possible. So in order to do that, to know what you're getting exposed to, you have to wear the badge. Okay? But there is a name for the badge. It's called a dosimeter. That's the badge that you wear when you're taking the x-rays. Now, the way it usually works is the office orders badges for everybody that takes x-rays, and you'll have one with your name on it. Okay, you just always need to have it on when you're taking an x-ray. And in this book, it says you're supposed to replace it every four weeks or every month. But uh, pretty much what they do now is you wear it for three months, and then they replace it. So after three months, the company that makes them sends a new badge to you. You send your other one back to them, and they, they put it in a machine that reads it that will tell you how much radiation you were exposed to. Okay. But if you do everything like you're supposed to, then you really are not going to have any exposure because you're always leaving the room before you actually hit the button to take the x-ray. Okay. Or you're standing behind a lead wall. Now, in the book, it also talks about uh, some different types of dosimeters on page 60 and 61 and 62. You have the, the film dosimeter, the TLD, and then there's one called the self-reading pocket dosimeter. The film dosimeter is a little badge that inside of it has a piece of x-ray film. Okay, and what they do is they measure how that x-ray film changes over time and that will give an indication of how many rims you're exposed to if you've been exposed to anything. There's another one called a TLD. It looks pretty similar to the film badge but it has a crystal inside of it. So that crystal will change with exposure to radiation. The other one is called a self-reading pocket dosimeter, and they show you a picture on page 61. It looks like a pen that you just keep in your pocket. This is like really old-fashioned, though. You don't see these anymore. And what you can do is you take that out of your pocket, and you stick it into a machine, and it'll read automatically if you've been exposed to any radiation. Okay? But that's pretty old. That's not really used too much anymore. So you're going to have that, you're going to change it every four weeks and get a new one. Well, yeah, now it's every three months, but if you, according to this book, it's every four weeks. So just go with every four weeks if you see it on a test. All right, so we're going to look at uh, the x-ray control panel. Okay, on the bottom of page 7, um, there's a picture of, this is the control panel where you go to put in all your numbers before you take your x-ray. So, for example, if you're going to do a chest x-ray, and it tells you that you're going to use 100 MA, you're going to use 44 kbp in a time of one half of a second, you have to put all those numbers into the machine. So for KVP, you have two knobs that you turn, the KVP major and the KVP minor. Okay, every time you turn the knob that says major, one click, it moves the needle like 10 spots. So it would go from like 30 to 40. Okay. Every time you move the minor knob, it moves it two spots. So if you had to get some, something like 46 and you started off at zero, so you would move this one four times to get to 40 and then this one three times to get up to 46. Okay. But this is pretty old. Most machines that you'll use are not like this anymore. Uh, most machines actually have 
a digital readout and there's a menu that you pick from. You just pick the x-ray that you're doing and that's all you have to do. You don't have to put in the MA and the KVP at the time. You just go through the menu and click on the one that you're going to use. But that's just an old-fashioned example of it. All right, you also see a picture on page 7 of the x-ray tube and uh, there's some wires going towards it and there's a generator. The generator is what gives you the power to produce the x-rays. Okay, so here's your x-ray tube with the anode and the cathode. You've got all these cables going over here to the generator. All right, because you need to get up to a pretty high voltage to produce radiation, okay? And, you know, for example, if you plug something into the wall, how many, how many volts are you getting out of that? What do you call these plugs? Uh, 110 volts. Okay, like you plug a hair dryer or something like that into it. It's only 110 volts. You need about 120,000 volts up here in the x-ray tube. So that's where the generator comes in. It boosts up the energy that you need in order to get all those volts. Okay, so there's some different circuits inside the x-ray tube to help you bring the energy up to 120,000 volts. There's a filament circuit and there's a high voltage circuit. Okay, the filament circuit is your MA. So whatever you set your MA to, it travels through that filament circuit to heat up this filament to produce the electrons. Okay, the high voltage circuit is the KVP. Okay. And that is going to activate the anode. So whatever KVP you set it at, that's going to actually turn on the anode. So what happens when you push the button to take the x-ray, the anode turns on like a magnet and it actually sucks those electrons over there towards it really fast. Okay. And then when they hit it, they explode and the beam of radiation comes out. Now there's also another thing inside this generator called the rectifier. That's right. Okay, the rectifier changes um, alternating current to direct current. So coming out of the, the uh, wall, you have alternating current. Okay, in other words, it's like you have some strong electricity, then it gets weak, then it gets strong, and then it gets weak. Okay, So it, it kind of alternates back and forth. That's pretty much how it is in any building. But that's not going to help you to get up to 120,000 volts. So the generator increases that electricity, and it's called direct current. It's just a constant direct stream of electricity coming out so that you can heat it up to 120,000 volts to produce the radiation in the x-ray machine. Okay, in the notes you also see on page 7 under filament circuit there's a box that says step down and then under the high voltage circuit um, or the KVP circuit there's one that says step up. You just want to know that the filament circuit is considered a step down circuit and the KVP is step up. It's just, it's just referring to the current of electricity that flows through there.